It is Saturday. It's about 12.30. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I've already had at least one nap in today, so that's pretty cool, too. Hope everybody's doing good. I hope that um, the weekend's going to be nice for people. Whatever you can do to make yourself happy, do that. I'm going to sneak out for a walk tomorrow. I live downtown, so there's no one around hardly except the denizens of the downtown, such as myself. And uh, today I'm just going to hang out. I've been hanging out for a couple of days inside, just doing my stuff. As I said on many occasions, and we've had this discussion before, to me, staying inside isn't really a chore. It's going out that requires a, an act of courage on my part. So yeah, I'm having a good day. And hope everybody else is too. Oh, we're just getting through. When I see these crises, you know, viruses and, you know, the last time, you know, it was a last thing that was in vogue was terrorists and stuff like that. And it always kind of flashes me back to when I when I was a kid. <laughs> I don't it's not one of those stories, but when I was growing up was the atomic bomb time. So my introduction to primary school was um, doing atomic bomb drills. And uh, one drill was running to the basement, which is where the cafeteria was, and putting our heads on the wall and saying a Hail Mary and hoping we didn't get fried, which was a um, a good prayer to pray because where I was going to school at McKeesport, St. Mary's, McKeesport was like ground zero because that's where all the mil a lot of the military industrial manufacturing was going on. So uh, yeah, it would be ashes before too long. So it kind of made us mentally live day to day because there were times yeah, when we thought the world was going to blow up, you know? It's an uncomfortable feeling, isn't it? It's an uncomfortable feeling also, you know, that when there's terrorists, you know, there's an uncomfortable feeling when there's viruses. These are all things that kind of reflect our lack of control over the situation and it reflects our our fear of death that kind of stuff but I think um, it also requires that we not any kind of social level or anything like that. I think this each of us has to decide how we're going to handle ourselves in that situation. Not necessarily contracting a disease, but being in this environment and being in, in this world that they've been thrust upon us quite quickly, right? And it's easy to talk shit to say what you would do, you know, you know, it's like, like those jag off guys, oh, you know, I'll tell you what I do if I was in that situation, you know, you know, that's bullshit. I remember what Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson has a good quote. Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> and I always kind of almost make that one of my modern mantras and stuff. 
So I guess what I'm saying is, like, you know, hang in there, man. We woke up this morning. We're healthy. We're happy. You know, we got food in the refrigerator. I even picked up a a roll of toilet paper when I was at the fish market. How do you like that? So uh, the poem I'm going to read today, and you thought you'd get away with without me reading a poem. You thought, oh, he's going to forget. It kind of touches a little bit on what we were just talking about, you know. Me as a kid doing the... Uh, the A bomb test. Oh, the other A bomb test, which I mentioned in a poem, was the one where, or the A bomb drill, was the one where they had us sit at our desks and then they would teach us to turn our desks over and hide behind the desks, you know, as if those little desks were going to stop, you know, atomic <laughs> bomb from hurting us. But. Uh, they didn't fuck us up too much or anything, right? We're, we're okay, right? It damages. Perhaps it's one of the reasons why when we were asked to go to Vietnam and kill people, we we already knew that, you know, the idea of, was a bad idea. Just based on maybe on our own personal experiences of almost getting our ass blown off every day. But we didn't. And I got to come here and be alive long enough to write some crazy poems, such as this one. This poem is called Dog's Breakfast. And uh, dog breakfast means something done badly or messy or something like that has nothing to do with Elpo. And let's see if you can find the two paintings mentioned in the poem. And uh, after that, it either is or isn't self-explanatory. So, um, Yeah, this is called Dog's Breakfast. Inaugural goose flesh and the boats at sea. We were taught to lay down our desks like bikers about to crash, trying to protect ourselves from the monstrance that would precede us in a procession of ash. Sostruga stru among the plutonium penumbras of St. Mary's Jeremy McKeesport with a lifespan of 24,000 years. So, who among us could bother with what the Basilek calls terrorism, which is only fear of death? Fuck them and their sock and buskin. Consider Egyptian legal agreements with the 23rd dynasty that would be 749 to 21 BC, and frequently included the phrase, if you do not obey this decree, may a donkey copulate with you. To deviate and interdigitate along Costa Brava, giving up wrestling with the miasma along with our clothes, and Jimmy is singing, a merman I should turn to be. Orwell reminds us that the proles and animals are free. The old Buddhists say it's all bullshit. Arnica and a pen in the dark. I'm sleepy. It's time for the devil wears nada. So, uh, yeah, that's the poem. I hope everybody has a good Saturday, and uh, I hope Sunday is a groovy day for you also. And uh, I think, um, hey, 
All I got to say is, evildoers beware.